testing testing can everyone hear me just testing making sure everyone hear me sorry guys i just uh experienced some small little bits of technical difficulties right so i was just uh, trying to get some stuff set up Okay, I'm starting the video, right? Okay, okay, good stuff. All right, hey Chan, All right, hey Chan, All right? Got chat here. I'm just going to allow everyone to send messages to everyone, All right? So you can see each other's messages. Okay, if you guys can hear me, could could I um could I just get um you guys to send a message in the webinar chat, right? Where we are sending messages now, so that um so that um we all are in sync on like if we have questions you know where to ask them okay uh, i can see quite a number of you guys streaming in nice to see you guys streaming in right i got oriel we got salesco christine uh, we got gain right okay dahiru nice to see you from nigeria all right got clement from nigeria nice to see you guys tune in all right all right good stuff good stuff right i am just i'm just getting a couple of things ready Right, um, because we had a couple of technical difficulties earlier, right? But nice, it looks like we got we got everyone here. Uh, product charts, right, and go. Okay, I'm still just gonna give another thirty seconds for the rest of you guys to stream in, All right? Break it. Okay. Okay, good stuff. All right, just let me see. Okay, good stuff. All right, hey Chan from Malaysia. All right, hey Aurel from Philippines. First timer, first timer, welcome here. Okay, guys, if everyone's able to see my screen clearly, right? I'm sharing my correct screen, right? Making sure everyone's able to see my screen clearly, right? Everyone's able to see me clearly, all right? Uh, and hear me clearly, let's begin today's session. Thank you for tuning in uh, to this Tick Meal um, Trading strategy clinic, right? So the trading strategy clinic, we're gonna do two things, right? Firstly, if you have a certain trading strategy which you'd like me to diagnose, right? Now's the best time you can actually let me know. So maybe you use a uh, maybe you use a moving average crossover, or you use Fibonacci, or you use support and resistance, or you know you have questions about your trading strategy which are not um, too familiar with. Anything to do with leverage, anything to do with price action, anything to do with um, your trading strategy let me know right and in the in the chat section and i will actually diagnose it for you see i can solve it for you otherwise i'll actually spend some time guiding you through how um the the market analysis for the week breaking down how i use my own strategy to look at where the big movers and what the big movements were expecting for the week okay now just let me um do one thing real quick sorry just let me hide this all right yeah so let's begin today's session all right, I can already see a couple of questions coming in. All right, sales code. All right, uh, Leo Leonito. All right, first time here also. Welcome. All right, sales code, welcome. Nice to see you guys here. Okay, just let me close off this WhatsApp so it's not going to bother too many people. So I got a couple of windows open. Just want to make sure um, everything's lag free. Okay. Okay, so guys, right, let's begin today's session. All right, so for those of you guys who are um, wondering, yes, take me weekly. Every week, you know, we have. Um, Every fortnight, we have a live trading session or trading strategy clinic. And every Monday, right, we have a webinar where we teach you and we help you apply uh, what, you, what you learn, right? So um, it's education, practice, education, practice, education, practice. All right. So, of course, disclaimer first, right? Remember, guys, everything in this webinar is educational in nature. So nothing should be construed as investment or trading advice. Uh, please do your own little due diligence before you guys trade. All right. So. Now, introducing your host for today, this is me, Desmond Leong. All right, so um, I'm finalist. Um, I run Everest Fortune Group. So we are the finalists for Best FX Research and Best Equity Research 2019, 2020, 2021. We work with many of the major financial institutions out there to help them forecast where the markets are heading. But we have a special partnership with Ice, uh, with Tickmill, sorry, with Tickmill, where we bring you guys the good stuff, the juicy stuff, the stuff that will take your trading to the next level. Okay. Yeah, and today's session, as the name suggests, is a trading strategy clinic. If you guys have questions, right? If you guys have questions on your trading strategy, let me know. Okay, 
right? Today's session is very, um, very good, very interesting, right? Uh, because we see a lot of different insights into the different ways people um, look at the markets, right? Of course, as you can tell from the picture, as you can tell from this video, I'm relatively young, right? Just 33, right? And if there's anything I can tell you is that, you know, you don't need 30 years in Bloomberg to be a good trader. You just need 30 years, uh, 30 days learning the right things and you can be a good trader. You can be a full-time trader, right? And that is where... Um, wherever whichever stage of life uh, of trading you are i want to encourage you guys that you know uh just focus on trading correctly right and the scary thing about trading is that you can learn the wrong stuff right a lot of people in trading right they compare they compare trading to like the world of academia i just need to move this stuff here yeah they, they compare trading to like the world of academia meaning that they believe that the more they study right the better they do Right, so that works. That works in school. That works when you are taking an exam. Right, the more you study for an exam, the better you know. The better you're gonna do. If you don't study, right, you won't do well. Okay, so people compare that to trading. They believe that the more strategies they read, the more webinars they attend, the more things that they read, the more indicators that they learn, right, the better their trading is gonna be. But that's the scary thing about trading is that is very different from the world of academia so in a funny way people who are really smart find it very difficult to trade because in, you can actually learn all the right stuff but if you apply them wrongly right you end up losing money right you can end up learning all the right stuff and then you know it's just the way you um uh the way you combine them right maybe you have over reliance on indicators on oscillators you have over-reliance on support and resistance, over-reliance on momentum, right? If you don't combine them in the correct order, right? In the correct proportion, you end up losing money, right? So that's a scary thing, you know, you, um, the people who read the most and learn the most, they're like, all right, I know Elliott Wave, I know harmonics, I know Fibonacci, I know, you know, um, cyclic theory, I know support resistance, right? And they think that they know everything and they're going to be a good trader, but it ends up paralyzing them. They're like, okay, this thing's telling me to sell, that thing's telling me to buy, you know, that thing telling me to get off the trade now, what do I do? All right, so that's the scary thing about trading, right? You can learn the right stuff, but if you apply it wrongly, you end up losing money. Okay, so that's why it's very important in this kind of um, strategy clinics in live trading sessions, right? We share with you how um, like us professionals trade. And at the same time, you have questions, you send it through, I'll do my best to answer them. And I help you get a better idea on how to trade more effectively. Okay, now, a few places that I want to point you guys to before we begin. Okay, number one. Tickmill.com, right? We have a nice little part over here called, if you scroll to the bottom, it's called the Tick Mill Traders Club. Newly launched, right? Just a couple of, um, I think one month ago or something, or one and a half months ago, it's a Tick Mill Traders Club. Now, this is the, I mean, this is the best place to be, okay? Because it's a place where you get direct access to me, you get direct access to, you know, Patrick, a whole bunch of the chief analysts here at Tick Mill. And of course, if you guys you know, come in and you all can trade together, that is a very fun place. It's a nice community, all right? So in this thing, you get really good trading insights. You get technical analysis and you got a nice little interactive community, right? I will show you this, the live preview of it, but basically you get news, you get technical analysis, you get discussions, you got video tutorials, notifications, right? And yeah, this is kind of how it looks like. Right, so the nice thing is that, yes, you know, you can actually look at the markets on one side and chat on the other side, right? All right, Christine, I'll send it to you in a second, all right? I'll send it to you in a second. Oh, actually, what do you mean in a second? I'll just send it to you right now. Here you go, Christine. Take a look at it, right? So, yeah, it's nice. You can chat on the side and you can trade on, you know, you can look at the market. So, imagine non-farm payroll, right? You can see the market is going crazy. You can trade it together. Really, really fun stuff. All right. So yeah, you know, some of our chief traders, you know, you can meet, you got me over there, you got Patrick, you got James, we're really good traders, we all trade full time, right, and you can find us in there. And you know, if you know how to um, make the most out of it, you know, learn us, learn from us, right, because I think, you know, giving, tra giving trading signals, you know, is like teaching a man to fish versus like giving him fish, right, short term, yeah, you know, this kind of analysis, this kind of forecast is going to help you. But the more you learn from us, the better you can trade. Right, and the less you can rely on us, right? You can trade on your own, right? And you know your financial future, your financial security is secured because you know how to make your own money, you know how to make your own decisions to trade well, 
right? So don't just go for the short-term solution of um, getting good signals and analysis, but rather, you know, on the long term, always look to know how to improve your um, trading strategy, right? Uh, hone your um, hone your skills, hone your trading psychology, really get become a better trader so that you don't need, ever need to rely on anyone, okay? Of course, yeah, to get access to the TickMill Traders Club, you first need a TickMill account. Once you have a TickMill account, you go to the TickMill Traders Club. I'm going to send you the link over here. Head over to TickMill Traders Club. You sign up an account and you don't need to do anything else, right? The TickMill support team will actually go in and see whether if you have a live, live and active account with TickMill, they will grant you access. Now, I want to encourage you guys to get access to this as soon as possible because we are going to start introducing some minimum deposit requirements. All right. So the bigger um, it starts off um, at hundred dollars, then I think it goes all the way up to thousand, ten thousand, and fifty thousand. Right. So if you have um, money, that's great. You know, register now. Right. Otherwise, if you are looking to get started, now's the best time to jump in before we introduce the different tiers. And with the different tiers, you get different access levels too. All right, so please jump in before we start um, rolling out that big update. All right, guys. Now, okay, so what in the world is a TickMill Traders Club and how does it look on the inside? Let me share with you guys, okay? In TickMill Traders Club, when you load it, this is the first thing that you're going to see, all right? Welcome to the TickMill Traders Club. You know, um, how do you unlock it? There are all the little bits of instructions over here, right? You see experience point bar at the top, pretty fun stuff. The more you participate, the higher rank you get, okay? Now, let me show you the juicy stuff, the good stuff, right? So, of course, you have this part here. If you want to direct message me, you want to direct message Patrick, you can, um, if you have the correct access level, you will be able to see this and you will be able to message us, right? So, I think with uh, 10,000 or $50, a, a thousand, sorry, 10,000 or $50,000 account, you should be able to direct message me and say, yo, Desmond, right? What's up, man? Um, Can you give me a your view on dollar index can you give me a view on euro dollar and we will be able to look at the market for you and i believe um at the 50 at the higher le at the higher tiers you actually get private private webinars right where we coach you uh, to be better traders so if you had a chance go jump in there all right now on top of the basic news that we share every day um over here we've got pound news we've got euro news we've got usd news the important thing here is of course let's just say i'm going to show it to you over here it's a part where you look at charts on one side, okay? And you look at the chat on the other side, okay? Charts and chat, charts and chat, as you can see over here, okay? Now, let me just go on to the daily time frame, one day time frame. So you might be looking at Kiwi dollar, okay? You might be looking at Kiwi dollar and you say, yo, yo, Desmond, right? I'm looking at this level here, right? And there is this crazy movement here. Right, so you can say, hey, hey Desmond, is this a double top breakout? And is this the neckline? So what's a double top breakout? You highlight the text, you click this little button called link object to text, and you click on whatever you just drew in. Okay, I draw this, click this, you can see this is a double top breakout. And what is the neckline? The neckline is over here. You send it through. And if anyone's reading the message for the first time, it's me, it's one of your fellow traders out there. And say, hey, Desmond, is this a double top breakout? You, all you need to do is to hover your mouse over it, right? And bam, you know, oh, okay, interesting. This is a double top breakout. And this is the neckline. You can see it becomes, it put a lot more context into trading, right? I know exactly which levels you're referring to. I know which, uh, which um, the exact, trend line, the exact support and resistance. I know exactly what you're referring to. Of course, if you like it, you give a nice little thumbs up. That's lit, right? I'm going to view discussion and I can just, um, this is the part where I can say, maybe I come here, I draw Fibonacci retracement. I'm like, okay, um, yeah, it is. But please take note that price should break the 38.2% FIB retracement first. Okay, what is the 38.2 feet retracement highlight? This level over here. And of course, this support level over here. Confirm, send it through. And if you're reading it, you're like, what is the 38.2? You can see it lights up when you hover over it. Okay, so this helps you teach you to be a better trader. Any question you have, 
any question you have, you ask it, I'm able to answer it super precisely, right? And that's how you can be a better trader. It's not just trading signals, it's not just trading analysis, but you practice and you practice and you practice, right? Create analysis, send me, you add mention me, I'll be able to see you. I'll be able to see anyone who mentions me by the side over here, right? Of course, it's taking a while to load. Anyone who mentions me, I'll be able to see it and I'll be able to jump in and answer you, okay? So that is um, one key um, update I want to tell you guys about. Take me to Traders Club, see you in there. As long as you have a Take Me account, you will have access to it. I mean, a live and active Take Me account, all right? Not a demo account. Go get access to it first because um, pretty soon we're going to introduce um, deposit requirements. And yeah, you know, it's going to make it tough to um, get access to the whole wide range of, um, of the Take Me um, Traders Club, all right? Now let's rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at, no, put it out over here. We're going to look at a couple of analysis, right? I'll be starting right at the top here, right? Right at the top, and I'll be explaining all the different levels. And just remove this over here. I'll be starting over here, and I'll be looking through the dollar index, uh, all the majors. If you have a request, right? If you have a request for a particular instrument you want me to look at, let me know, and I will analyze it live um, for you guys okay okay we an i'll analyze it live for you guys okay our hit rate is pretty good usually right so hopefully we have fun today okay now let's begin today's session okay first and foremost the dollar index the dxy dollar index he actually forms the um one of the the key core um um, the strength of the US dollar that we expect for the week. You will notice that I'm using the one day time frame. Okay. I I can see a request from Dick B already. Pound dollar and Bitcoin. Yes, yeah, sure thing. All right, Dick B, if you can, right, um, please um send your message and there's a little drop down to hosts and panelists or to everyone. You can send it to everyone so everyone knows that um what um what instruments you're requesting and if I do um, update you, you know, um, there's a, they have a little bit more context to the question that you're asking, right? Okay, let's begin. All right, so dollar index, the first thing I want to highlight to you guys is that really, really big. Before, my approach to trading is that before anything, before trend lines, before indicators, before oscillators, before Fibonacci, what do you want to find first? Okay, what do you want to find first is the support and resistance levels, okay? You want to draw, for me, I look at what I call um, magnetic levels. Oh, sorry. I'm going to draw a level right across over here. Bam. Okay. This is my pivot. Nice little resistance there looking over here. Why did I draw this resistance level? You, know, you might be wondering. You have so many different levels to draw. Why do you draw here? Right now, the key thing that I want to train you guys to take a look at is you want to look for this thing called overlap levels. Okay. Overlap levels are prices at where uh, where price um, responds or reacts the most, right? You can see, in this case, price reacts from, touches, it drops from, touches, it bounces, touches, it bounces, touches, it bounces, right? A little bit of reaction here, a little bit of a reaction here, a little bit of a reaction here. It is very clean, right? The reactions are very nice. Most of the time, it's kind of just the the price wick that you can see. The price wick that touches it or exceeds it just by that little bit, okay? These are really clear overlap levels that you want to look out for. Now, you contrast this with me just moving these prices a little bit down here. You notice that once I move it down here, the prices is not as clear, right? There's this, you know, it comes up here, a little bit of mess over here. It misses this part here. Right, there's a whole bunch of mess over here, you know, and there's a whole bunch of mess over here. So you notice just adjusting it, even though price is very close to either, just adjusting it just a little bit, you can see how much cleaner um, price can get. The cleaner it is, the better the overlap. Okay. So first and foremost, I already noticed that there's weakness that we're expecting on uh, dollar franc. I think we are at a major resistance. Okay. Now, so in this case, um, we have a slight bearish bias. If there's a big resistance here, price can do one of two things. It can break out. It can drop down. How you're going to decide whether it's going to break out or drop down is based on, firstly, the momentum. I'm not going to write it out. My handwriting's terrible. 
the first thing you want to figure out is the momentum. Is it in a bearish trend, right? And secondly, right, um, are there other Fibonacci levels? This is where you fine tune it. And are there additional levels why you might not why you might see a reversal from here instead of a breakout? Let me explain this step by step to you guys so you guys get a better understanding. Okay. So first and foremost, I see that price is over here. The thing that is going through my mind, right? The thing that's going through my mind is I'm asking myself, am I going to see a reversal or am I going to see a breakout? Okay. To determine that, right? I need to first and foremost see, all right, I can see that price is making lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, right? So it's in a little bit of a bearish trend. You got a little bit of bearish momentum. Okay. Fair enough. That's nice. I throw on my Ichimoku cloud. So usually um, Ichimoku, right, is pretty complex, meaning that Ichimoku, the, the standard one that most Ichimoku have is like this, right? And it looks like a mess, right? It's way too messy to make any good information out of it. So what I do is I actually focus on using the cloud, right? So I remove everything. I remove everything and I just leave the background. Plot's background and I have a red for bearish cloud and green for bullish cloud, okay? Now, the thing that you want to take note of over here when you're looking at the clouds is that you want to compare it, right? You want to compare it to the clouds in the sky. What do I mean by that? Is that, you know, imagine if you are, um, you're going out, right? You're going out, you look at the cloud in the sky and you're like, okay, um, wow, the, there are really, really thick clouds out there, right? It looks like it's going to rain, right? On some days, look at the sky and like, wow, you know, it's a, it looks like it's a passing cloud, right? Really, really thin, right? Uh, not that strong. So think about it as like the Ichimoku cloud is something like that. Depending on the size of the cloud, you know how strong it is, right? In this case, we have a pretty big bearish, yeah, we got a pretty big bearish red cloud over here. Right, so we have a little bit more bearish momentum, right? So it's slightly stronger. So I naturally is there not only a resistance, right? Not only is there um Christine says that you can't get to both links. Um, um Christine, which country are you tuning in from? Could I just check? Yeah, which country are you tuning in from? Okay, but anyway, yeah, so there's not only a resistance, uh, Malaysia, you should have access. Um, you can't open both links, what does it say, right? So, and then there is bearish, you know, um, a bearish trend. Um, at the same time, there's an Ichimoku cloud. So you got one reason, you got two reason, and you got three reason why price might be reversing. Okay, so you already got three reasons. Now, this is better than just one reason, of course. Then... You do a Fibonacci retracement from here to here. You notice that price is testing a key 38% retracement, right? So I can actually highlight the level over here, right? And this is a bearish area, right? So we now have four reasons why price might be going down, right? We had this one reason over here. We got the trend line, uh, I mean, a bearish trend, two. We got the Ichimoku cloud, three. Right, we got the 38% retracement, four. We've got four reasons is going down and zero reasons is going up. So our natural bias for this is that dollar index should be going down. Okay, that's the beauty of it, right? Remember, in trading, it's all about adding up the odds, right? It's all about the adding up the odds. I mean, technically, I can actually pull up, a, like I think it's the stochastic. Uh, stochastic is okay, I guess. I'm not that great, All right? But it's in a clearly stochastic is in an overbought zone, right? So it should be reversing from there. So we got a fifth reason over here why price might be reversing. But I don't use stochastic that much, so I'm gonna hide it. I'm gonna hide stochastic a bit, right? But I, we got almost five reasons why prices is gonna drop. If you use um, Elliott Wave Theory, and for those of you guys who know how to use Elliott Wave Theory, congratulations, it's very advanced. But there is a wave one. Looks like an A, B, C kind of correction here, wave two, wave three down here, wave four followed by wave five, right? Rule of alternance, say that if this is a complex, uh, longer drawn out recovery, this should be a faster recovery. So we can be pretty confident that this is a wave four and we might be seeing a wave five that could even go all the way lower, but we're just going to play it to here, okay? 
So we now have one, two, three, four, five on the stochastic, six reasons why price might be dropping. And this is how you get the odds in your favor, right? It's not only about just doing analysis, right? Uh, having one thing, right? Not, it's not only just trading support and resistance, but what you want to do is you want to combine as much of your um, conviction across different camps of thought. We've got the people who love support and resistance who agree with you. We've got people who use Ichimoku Cloud who agrees with you. Right, we got people who use you know just lower highs to define um, a bearish trend that agrees with you. We got the people who use Fibonacci who agrees with you. We got the stochastic people who agree with you, and we got the Elliott wave people who agree with you. So we got six groups of people who agree that price should be falling on the X Y. Okay. Um, Digby, right? I think we use the TVC um, price fit. I'm trying to change the the price fit for DXY to more accurately reflect um, out there because DXY is technically not instrument, right? So yeah, you know, if you go to TVC, I think, oh no, not TVC. Um, see, you notice uh, DXY price can change. Like in this case, right, I think it's different, right? This is 104, correct? Um, while this is um, 104.6, right? It kind of differs bit by bit, right? I kind of use TVC. I need to update the Tick New Traders Club one. But yeah, you know, enough reasons why we should be expecting a drop here um, for a, for DXY. Just let me turn on the aircon. It's just a little bit hot. All right. So let me just hide this whole bunch of stuff. Okay. So we're expecting a drop on DXY. And how low can it go? We're just going to play down to here as a first support. Why am I playing? Why am I playing the move down to here? Why don't I play it further? Why don't I play it all the way down to here, for example? right maybe all the way further down okay now the reason why we don't play further down and if i may share with you guys is that it it involves this concept it involves this concept called um locus of control okay i'm gonna share with you again it involves this concept called locus of control meaning imagine um let me think of an example You're going to the beach, all right? You're going to the beach at the end of this month, right? And the weather forecast, right? <laughs> the weather forecast says that, okay, you know, right? Maybe Christine, right? We're, you're going to the beach at the end of the month, right? It is going to be, it's going to rain, okay? What is the first thought that crosses your mind when the weather forecast tells you that it's going to rain one month later, 30 days later, right? What's the first thought that kind of crosses your mind, right? Is it one of like, yeah, yeah, oh man, it's going to rain? Or is, it, or is the thought going to be, how accurate are these guys, right? Why should I believe you when it's one month away? Okay, right? You really start to question, right, um, whether this forecast is even reasonable. What is it based off? However, if we have a forecast, if we have a forecast for weather forecast is at the end of this week, Sunday, this week on Sunday or Saturday is going to rain. It is believable, but we will still be a little bit hesitant. We'll be like, yeah, you know what? The weather, anything can happen in the weather, right? I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to take my chances. It's not going to rain. I'm going to the beach. I'm going to enjoy myself. All right. So that is the... Um, Instead of one month, it goes to one week. Now you compare that to you reading the weather forecast that in the next one hour is going to rain. That is a lot more trustable, a lot more usable, right? So you're going to look at the weather forecast and it says, okay, in one hour, it's going to rain at beach. Are you going to then go to the beach? You know, it is unlikely that you do that because you'll be saying that, yeah, um, weather forecast says it's going to rain in one hour. And you trust it a lot more because it's within their locus of control. It's not so far away like one week. It's not even further away like one month. And that is what happens um, in trading. So many people are interested in catching this move all the way down to this level over here, right down here. They're thinking about the big Hollywood move. They get it right. They make 100%, whatever it is, right? But remember, in trading, it's all about being in control. You need everything to be in your locus of control. So we play from one resistance to one support, one support to one resistance. That is how you keep things in control. The moment I play any move beyond here, right? I have, you know, I have this bounce. I have this bounce, right? This many people are saying that price is going to bounce, 
right? So price might just bounce up and my trade might not work out, okay? The odds of price reversing from here to here is high, right? But the odds of price breaking this level and going down further is low. So that is an important thing you need to take note of when you're trading, right? You don't just take the trade from one level to one level and think that, you know, the probability of it reaching there is the same, right? The probability is never the same. From one resistance to one support, and if there is nothing in between, it goes down very fast. But if you put small little stuff in between, right there is where it might need to bounce a bit before coming down. Or in some cases, right, it bounces and never comes back. Okay, so that's the, that's the important thing to take note of whenever uh, we're looking at locus of control in trading. We don't want to play. We don't want to play a move that is too far away. Okay. Okay, now we um, DXY, I've established to you guys that you know we are bearish on DXY, expecting prices to drop. I saw a request for pound dollar, right, slightly earlier, right? And my analysis on pound dollar is really simple. A lot of people are wondering, is pound dollar going to make this double top exit? Okay, a lot of people are wondering about that. What I want to let you guys know is that this double top exit happens to be at the 23% of the entire Fibonacci, okay? That means that it is on a really good support. It's not on any random support, but it's on the 23% Fibonacci retracement support, which also happens to line up on the outer edges of the Ichimoku cloud over here. So it might be able to continue to push it up just that little bit. However, if you want to be a little bit safe, you know, this would be, this would be the neckline, okay? This would be a neckline. We need prices to break this level to trigger the broad, the drop to 38 percent uh, to a 38 percent level over here. Okay, so it does look like a double top, but this level needs to be broken in um, in Fibonacci theory and in Elliott wave theory. 23.6 percent is the first level that needs to be broken to trigger the bigger move down. Okay, so a lot of people are wondering why is the 23.6 percent for? It's actually like the gatekeeper, right? So if you're not able to break the 23 percent, don't expect your prices to reach. The chart patterns to reach its full potential but if it's able to break the 23.6 percent usually it can drive prices down a lot lower okay in this case 38 percent you can even play up to the 50 percent retracement right so yeah um we are 1.1953 is the key level to look out for for pound dollar right at the same time the key resistance that we're looking out for is up here okay simple enough key resistance and we are playing the move down to um, playing the move down to 1639 if price really manages to break out. Okay, I see a request of Bitcoin. Guys, if you have other requests for me to take a look at, let me know, right? And I'll try to have the time to answer you guys, all right? Just finishing my, let me take a quick sip of the drink. Okay, let's rock and roll. All right, now we're looking at Bitcoin. I think I established something on Bitcoin pretty early on, right? Let me see. Bitcoin, the first thing I like to do with Bitcoin is I like to zoom far back and see if there's any big level that I miss, right? And it is pretty obvious that there is a really, really big level over here. Also, one day time frame, right? It's a pretty big level over here. Bam, right there. Why is it such a big level, right? It's because price has, it's called magnetic level. Price bounce off it one time, react off it another time, and you react off it another time. Three times, okay? That means, ideally, we could be seeing price kind of inch upwards to come to test that level again. Okay, entirely possible, entirely possible, All right? Entirely possible because on the short term, we can see prices slowly, slowly um, rising. All right, you can see prices slowly, slowly rising. Um, okay, Benetzer, right? Um, I think to trade on trading view, right? Uh, uh, trading view only allows you to trade the futures version. Right, I don't think allows uh, for tick mill. Um, so yeah, the amazing thing um, is that you can actually find um, tick mill over here, right? 
I'm, I'm not sure if they allow you to search for the source. Right, take me on. Um, but for futures, I, I can't find it over here. But yeah, uh, if I'm not wrong, take me on trading view is only able to trade the futures. You're not able to trade like FX and commodities and stuff. Okay. Yeah, so heads up on that, Benetza. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Now, um, so this level that we're expecting uh, to see on Bitcoin is the first resistance. It needs to be broken to trigger the move up to here. The second resistance. Okay, I've been I've been watching these levels for a bit. It's nice to see. It's nice to see that there's a nice overlap support over here. Really nice support level. So price is kind of in in the in between between two really key levels, right? Um, we do expect prices to kind of touch this level, come up here, break this, and kind of make a push for the second resistance, right? Um, aided by the momentum, that price is kind of slowly slowly inching upwards. Right, so it's a, there's a definitely a change in trend. And if I'm not wrong, for the Ichimoku cloud, right, you can see that price has finally crossed over the Ichimoku cloud. Nicely a bit of um green cloud over there, right? So we should be able to see prices being taken all the way up, at least to the first resistance. And if it really breaks the first resistance, we should see um ideally see it continue to the second resistance. Okay, guys. Now, um, does anyone else have any other um, instruments you want me to look at right now? So time to share it. I'll try my best um, to take a look, right? I think a few nice ones that we're looking at. Dollar franc, really nice overlap resistance. Nice reaction from here. Nice little bounce, nice little bounce, nice little bounce. Nice reaction. And finally, the nice reaction pushing prices down. Okay, for dollar franc. Now, okay, for some of you guys who are wondering, how do I take these trades? Okay, got request a pound yen. So how do I take these trades, right? I will firstly just say just let's just say I'm, I'm looking at dollar franc. I know that price is on resistance over here. I actually zoom out and I go into the four hour chart to then see how I can take advantage of this, right? I know that price is on resistance at least on the daily time frame. I then notice divergence. Price is making higher highs. You know, stochastic is making lower highs. Right, so it's a very strong bearish divergence, right? And so it gives me a good indication that price might reverse from here um, to first support. Okay, so that's the part, you know, where you're, you're taking, you're looking at a one day time frame and you can actually jump onto the four hour time frame to zoom in a little bit more to get a better understanding of where price is exactly and how you can kind of fine tune it, right, for your trading entry. Okay, I got a request of pound yen. I'm going to take a quick, um, may I know how to confirm the breakout? All right, Chan, I'll conf um, So for example, dollar franc um how do you confirm the breakout i if you're talking about bitcoin right i assume you're talking about bitcoin or uh, something else like were you were you asking about bitcoin uh on, on how to confirm the breakout you need to wait for price to close above the support or resistance level to confirm the breakout okay so the important thing the important thing that you want to avoid is you want to avoid when price just touches that level touches that level a bit touches that level Right, they're at a stage where they're really curious. Okay, as you can see over here, right? So yeah, when price kind of just touches these levels a bit, right? You can see a reaction It's not going to be a breakout. You want to wait for price to really, really close, um, close strongly, like below here to trigger a breakout, okay? Okay, but um, without digressing too much, I'm going to take a quick look at pound yen. I think I was looking at it earlier on the one day time frame. Ah, uh, yes. Um, a lot of people love to trade pound yen. I'm going to look at it on the one week time frame. Now, the thing about pound yen is that it is in an ascending channel. Okay, it's, it is in an ascending channel, right? And we can see that price um, in terms of the Ichimoku right price has been holding it up pretty nicely so i do have a slight bullish bias for it to continue just because it is in the direction of the trend right meaning that price is going up you know um the there's a nice channel that's pushing prices up right so and price is making low um higher lows so technically from a theoretical perspective it is um it is a bullish trend okay in terms of the support level Right, I'll, I do want to highlight to you that this is a really, really strong support level. Maybe I tuned over here. 
this is a really strong support level. You might be able to better see it on the one day time frame, right? Maybe about over here, right? Really, really nice support level uh, for price to continue bouncing from. Okay. And of course, we expect prices to rise. We don't need to play prices all the way up to here. You know, playing up to here should relatively be enough. All right. Because you don't want to overstretch yourself, right? You don't want to overstretch yourself too much. All right, resistance here, playing the bounce up on pound yen. Okay, guys. Now, yeah, um, I'm just going to look at a couple more instruments. All right, I think one of the key ones I want to look at was gold. Okay. I really love gold. Right, and the key level that we want to highlight for gold. Sorry, my throat was hurting a bit. Yeah, the key level that we want to highlight for gold is this level over here. Bam. Okay, we can see that price has traditionally, you know, reacted off this level, bounced off this level quite a few times, reacted off this level, right? And of course, there's no movement here, a little bit of movement here, but gold definitely is, you know, is looking good in that sense that we should be able to minimally call a reversal from here, okay? It looks like the cloud is kind of thinning out a bit over here, so not that great a cloud. Price has broken this level, so there's all the chance that gold might come here and drop how low might drop to about over here this would be the first support okay so we might be able to see gold kind of drop all the way down all the way down to here okay i really like this level and i think it lines up with a big 50 percent uh 38 percent a 38.2 percent uh, fibonacci uh fibonacci level Okay, all right, yeah, so this is the view that we have on gold. We expect prices to drop further, all right? Testing there, there we go, right? Um, playing, move all the way down to this first support level. Actually, but if you're a little bit more conservative, you can just play it to this level and it should minimally be enough. Playing prices down to this support level. It should be enough already, but if you're a little bit more ambitious, you can play even further down. Why I like this, why I particularly like this support level is that price has reacted off the, Multiple times, there's a big bounce, there's a big bounce, there's a big reaction, there's a big reaction, reaction, right? And there is a big, um, what's right for it? There's a lot of movement over here. So we should be able to see prices kind of get attracted down um, to this level. Okay. Now, um, let's see, let's see if there's anything else we can take a look at. WTI, nothing much. Um, dollar cat, nothing much. Kiwi dollar, I explained to you guys already. Dollar yen a little bit, um, euro dollar, euro dollar nothing much. Aussie dollar, um, Aussie dollar has this little bit of a head and shoulders reversal that a lot of people are looking at. A lot of people are looking at this head and shoulders reversal, right? Technically, it's exit potentials all the way down here. So that's one thing to take note of for Aussie dollar. But it, there isn't really a nice level to trade from. If you're gonna trade. Aussie a Kiwi, just trade Kiwi dollar. It has a lot um, clearer setup. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Kiwi dollar, the thing that a lot of people are wondering is it was there a double top breakout? But because we we're able to forecast a 50% retracement, we we're able uh, to see that, you know, price needs to break this level before it can go further down. All right. So that's the importance of fine tuning your trading strategy with um, Fibonacci, right? It's very useful in helping you filter out um, fake breakouts. Okay, now let's see um, US 500, right? What I like about US 500 is that price has previously, previously price keep going lower, keep going lower, keep going lower. Today was the day where, you know, price actually broke the trend line, right? Seeing a smaller momentum, uh, momentary rise to this resistance level before dropping back to off, which is actually our support level that we have yeah, the support level that we have. So we should ideally be expecting prices to rise a little bit more for um, US 500. Okay, this is a really nice first support. Why do I say it's a nice first support? The price react, react, bounce, bounce, react, bounce, 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 bounce multiple times. Okay, that's why it's a very nice level and this gives us enough confidence for us to play the move up to first resistance. Okay, if it breaks this level, yeah, you know, can continue up to the second resistance 
And if it does break this support level and it breaks the first support, right, we should be able to see prices go down to the second uh, support level at 3759. Okay. Now, guys, um, I just want to take some time and ask, does anyone have any questions regarding the analysis? Does anyone have any requests for any instruments you want me to be looking at? Okay, please let me know right away. I'll do my best to answer them. Where is my Zoom? All right. I'm going to give it like a few seconds. Give it a while. All right, I'm back. Um, okay, thank you very much, Clement. We got Nasdaq. So I'll just take, take a look at the Nasdaq in a bit. Um, share the link of the Go Analysis. Shem, I can't really share a link on Go Analysis, but I can show it to you over here. You can take a screenshot of this Go Analysis if you want. Okay, we're looking to sell below 1871 to play the move down to 1807. Okay, we're then going to take a look at Nasdaq, right? Um, Um, Nasdaq, if you want to trade the CFD version of it, right, we can trade, yep, there you go. Okay, let me take a look at Nasdaq, see what it's telling me to do. So I usually go at higher, higher time frame, see if I'm missing anything out. Look like there might be a little bit of a change in momentum from bearish to bullish. Um, now that price had, you know, finally, finally broken this trend line and started going up. So it might be seeing a little bit of bullish momentum. Then I go into a lower time frame now, right? And very nicely, I can see all the different reactions over here where price actually helped me avoid over here. Okay, so firstly, let's go here. Okay. Now, in terms of the support level for NASDAQ, I'm going to highlight a bit of this level over here. This is my key support level for NASDAQ. Okay, Robert, now this is my key resistance level on NASDAQ. Uh, no, key pivot level. I do know this. There's a little bit of resistance that we can look at over here. Why I like this first resistance is price react off it once and it's reacting off it another time. So really nice resistance over there. I believe it's also a key 1% to 7% Fibonacci retracement. Yeah, 1% to 7138, very nice. Okay, so what do we look at for Ichimoku Cloud, right? Not that great, but we can see that price has started across above it. So we might be seeing a little bit of bullish momentum. That might take prices up a little bit, All right? So we could see prices kind of edge up towards this first resistance over here. All right, we got bullish, um, we got a bullish arrow. Um, any other key resistance level I'm looking out for? Nope, no key resistance, no key support. I guess support if you have lack of a better level to find it. This is actually a pretty good support level for you to use, all right? This will be support. This is a pretty good support level that you, you want to use. Why is it a nice support level? Reaction from here, reaction from here, bounce, 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 reaction from here. So it's a clear area of interest. When you're able to find this clear area of interest, you're able to map your support and resistance levels very well. Okay, guys, I noticed there's some bit of Q&A, right? Um, okay, I've answered uh, from Elvin. I answered uh, pound dollar already. Um, hope you find it useful. Uh, Kumar, how do you find strong and weak currency pair, you know? Um, you can't find strong or weak currency pair. I mean, you can. You can just find whether uh, it's a good setup or a bad setup, right? A good setup has everything lining up for it, right? In this case, maybe you have, um, what is it, DXY? Dollar franc, yeah. A good setup has everything lining up for it, meaning that, you know, price is on resistance, right? There's a overlap, there's a retracement, right? There's, there's momentum. There's bearish movement. Everything is lining up very nicely. Those that don't line up very nicely are like this. You know, price is a little bit far away from your entry. 
right? So you don't know if it's going to come down. So there's, it's not so much of a strong and weak currency pair, right? Because for a currency pair to be strong, right? You need one instrument to be strong. Like, like you know, if you expect Euro dollar to be, to be weak, right? If you expect Euro dollar to drop, that means Euro will be dropping or, you know, and dollar will be rising. Either, either that or Euro is dropping, you know, but, but basically, you know, the relationship is over here. Right, so it's not so much of finding a strong weak currency pair, but it's finding the uh, a strong or weak um, trade setup. Okay, and the trade setup is really determined by how close price is, the proximity to your entry. So I really like um, DXY. Price is so close to my entry, right? It makes it, uh, yeah, you can see it's, uh, it'd be a pretty good setup over there. Right, dollar franc also reversing quite nicely. Uh, dollar yen a little bit further away, right? It's a little bit hard to sell from here because it's just a Fibonacci retracement. Mm -hmm. Right, but this is a nice level to watch out for. Aussie dollars in the middle of nowhere, the support and resistance, so it's not really that good a level. Kiwi dollars still breaking this double top. If it does, it's a brilliant time to get in and play the move. All right, and dollar cat, not much, right? Finally, in a nice little ascending support, breaks this level, nice little support, you know, we should be able to expect prices to go up. I think gold and WTI, nothing much too. Anyway, guys, um, thank you so much for tuning in to today's session. I, I hope you found it useful. Right. Um, right. I really hope you guys found it useful. I see a whole bunch of you stayed all the way um, throughout the session, which I really, really appreciate. Right. Um, let me just stop sharing my screen. Right. I really, really appreciate. Right. Thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you guys on the Traders Club. Right. If you guys are at the Traders Club, that's amazing. Right. Um, it allows us to, you know, kind of have a take our chat over there. Um, just let me see where it's, yeah. it allows us to kind of discuss a little bit more over there. If you have questions, you can feel free to ask, uh, ask me too over there, right? And yeah, you know, um, please join before you. Um, um... Oh, Leah is asking, are you saying trade? I think those are the higher probability setups, right? Gold, you know, looking at a resistance at eighteen seventy one for the reversal. Kiwi dollar has a pretty good setup too, right? But you need to break sixty one twenty seven for the drop, right? I personally really love DXY and the weakness that it's looking, okay. Thank you very much, Jill. Thank you very much, Elvin. Thank you very much, Tristan, Leah, right, Oral, Aura, Digby. Thank you for um, attending today's session. I hope to see you in the Traders Club, right? Remember to stay safe, trade safe. I'll catch you guys in a week. Please register for next week's webinar if you have the chance, right? How do you get there? Go to tickmill.com. Thank you very much, Mary. Go to tickmill.com. Go to promo. Um, go to part. Go to tools right go to i webinars over here right and then you can go register for the next few webinars i mean there's a couple of um jumbo ones here i have one over here which is next week next week we are going to we are going to cover a pretty exciting topic let me see what the topic is i'm going to send you guys here yeah 13 of march we're going to touch momentum masterclass good stuff all right Oh, sorry, uh, they're, they're saying the correct link. Yeah, it's a uh, take new webinars over here. Okay, good stuff. I'll catch you guys next week. Stay safe, trade safe, peace out. All right, take care, everyone. See you. Bye bye.